A culture of harassment and impunity brought into sharp focus once again. Behind the front pages, stories of a workplace in which sleaze and bullying are endemic, as well as underreported. Over the past few months, Channel 4 News has been gathering testimony from parliamentary workers across the political spectrum. And tonight, in the first part of our investigation, our findings suggest this kind of behaviour is rife, with witnesses and victims feeling they can't come forward. My friend had a really bad experience. Her boss was threatening her, saying, if you don't perform this sexual favour, you won't progress in your career. I felt stuck and I was crying all the time. I've never reported these incidents and I wouldn't. Of the 51 people that we spoke to, all of whom are or have been recently working for an MP in Parliament, more than one in 10 said they'd been sexually harassed. A quarter said that they'd seen someone else being sexually harassed and half said that someone else had approached them to tell them that they'd been a victim of sexual harassment. The testimony we've been collecting is voiced by actors to protect witnesses' identities. I've seen an MP and a staff member in the bar, the MP grabbing them and holding them. I could see the staff member looking visibly uncomfortable. There are lots of staffers I know who have experienced of being harassed in some way, from the relatively minor to the more serious. Most of them are men. I've been propositioned by multiple male MPs. After a job rejection from one senior MP, he tried to engage in an affair with me. I've never reported these incidents, and I wouldn't. In the wake of the Me Too movement, a new independent complaint system was set up in 2018. But it takes, on average, 200 days for investigations to conclude. And it requires victims and not witnesses to come forward. Our research shows that people, for the most part, don't feel like they can come forward. Nearly 60% of those we surveyed told us that there simply wasn't a culture of speaking out, with 70% saying that they felt that if they did, their career might be harmed. Male staffers who suffer from sexual harassment by male MPs is somehow treated as though it's less serious. We've got an intern in our office now, and I've given them a list of 15 MPs. And I've said, if you've ever see a job going for any of these MPs, never apply for it. But these MPs are going to be there for a very long time, employing people, because unless what they do is criminal, they can still be an MP. We put all our findings to parliamentary authorities, and they told us they wanted everyone working in Parliament to feel safe coming forward, but that they know there are still barriers to this happening. They said they would be reviewing working practices, including whether or not it was right that individual MPs directly employ their own staff, or whether they should be employed by an outside body instead. Jenny Simmons is a senior parliamentary researcher and GMB union rep working inside the House of Commons. I do speak to people every week, multiple people every week, who are having some form of issue with their MP, whether it's um, that they're on a short-term contract, which is just constantly being renewed rather than being given permanency because the MP likes to have a bit of control and keep the staff on their toes, or whether it's the staff is constantly being sworn at because the MP is frustrated and they're taking it out on them, or whether, an MP feel, whether a staff member feels that an MP is perhaps um, pursuing, you know, having drinks with them after work and they don't feel comfortable with it, or asking inappropriate questions about their personal life, things like that. Um, I think that when politicians try and say that there are a few bad apples, I really resoundingly condemn that. It's not a case of a few bad apples. I do think it's a massive systemic problem in Parliament. These corridors of power then, ones of imbalance too, of subterfuge and denials, with juniors too afraid to speak out. The systemic problems our witnesses described having bubbled under the surface for years, today reaching boiling point at the very top of government, prompting questions not just in Parliament, but inside Number 10 itself.